Before we break down the latest on the Alabama Crimson Tide, we are once again asking you to subscribe. We are 180 subscribers away from 10K. Let's get there as the college football season rolls on. Get more videos by subscribing right now. Let's talk Jalen Milrow here. Milrow had a career day against Texas A&M. Uh, very fitting that the last time he played, eh, they didn't trust him to throw the football. Then they do, and it, it's incredible results there. The question now, though, can that continue? Will it spark his confidence passing, the team's confidence on, on the offense overall, and lead to better overall results for this team as they enter the meat of the SEC schedule? So far this year, honestly, if you take away the Texas game, <clears throat> he's actually played really well. The difference is you're going to be facing more Texas-level talent as the year goes on. He's completing a good amount of his passes, 67.6%, good passing yards. They haven't even used his legs the way I was thinking slash hoping slash begging them to do so. It's been fine so far. The interceptions, again, outside of Texas, have been pretty good. And there's very clear right now strengths and weaknesses to Milrose game. The screen game, the short game, is fine. Uh, screen game behind the screen, which would be a little, a little bit higher, actually. You've won it more above 95%, somewhere in that range. We'll talk about one of those plays, by the way, in just a minute. The short area game inside of 10 yards, past line of scrimmage, 81.4%. Not too bad. It's those, those middle tier throws, that 10 to 19 range. I call it the money range for, for QBs. You want to be a special player at the college or especially the NFL level. You've got to hit those challenging throws. It aren't deep balls, but you know it's, it's third and seven. You probably got to run that ball past the six. Can you get 12 yards on it? Third and 10, can you get the first down? That's not just a run after catch play. He's had issues there. 50% completion rate, one TD, three interceptions. I think you can absolutely make an argument there's some scheme coaching stuff that's involved in that conversation, but the results are the results. The deep ball has thrived for Alabama. 68%, 601 yards, seven touchdowns, zero interceptions. I think, again, it gives some credit to the scheme. They've taken their shots appropriately. Really, uh, frankly, unbelievable results. I mean, that's, that's, that's Tua stuff. That's what that is right there. It's really impressive for Jalen Milrow. But there is still room for growth. Uh, you guys know what I'm referring to when I say the boneheaded play, right? It was mind-numbingly confusing, and Milrow took the blame for it. I don't know if that was really the case. Uh, the background here, right? They, they have lead against a &M. They convert the third down play. It's maybe a catch. You're not, they're trying to go quick. It's the line. Snap it. You can bleed clock, run the ball once, then kneel it, and you're fine. And Milrow... It looked like it was an RPO option for him. Either it was or it wasn't. Either way, he throws it to the, to the boundary, and it's like five yards short of the wide receiver, and it's incomplete. The clock stops. It's like, okay, well, wait, what? Now the game might not be over quite yet. Like It wasn't quite full-on Mario Cristobal BS, but we're kind of getting close to it there. Here's what Milrow said on that play. That play haunts me to this day, or hurts me to this day. It wasn't a smart play by me. I should have just handed the ball off. That was not a part of the play at all. Should have just handed it off. Definitely something I can build off of and learn off of because that was not part of the play. I should have just handed the ball off. I hope that's the case. I hope they're not calling RPOs. Like, just call your inside zone play. Look, you're trying to go tempo. You're kind of panicking a little bit. I know. Got to dial it in. Glad it didn't cost you. Could cost you later on in the year. So what is your confidence level in Jalen Milrow? Scale this, for, scale this for me, excuse me, from 1 to 10. One on the low end, 10 on the high end. If the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Coming up next on today's show, the Jermaine Burton impact is very much finally here. Maybe not to the full-fledged level we were hoping for last year, but certainly is making a big impact this season. Burton, especially against a and was on fire. He's still a bit streaky. I call him a, a streak player. Because he's at his best doing streak routes, going downfield, making big plays. Also, will make one great catch and then drop one. College kids, you know, what are you going to do? Burton has 17 catches on the year. He's averaging 22.7 yards per catch. And that is, I mean, that is, is going to be among the, the college football leaders when it's all said and done, if not number one, depending on, you know, how, of course, the rest of the season plays out. He's a big play threat, and a big reason why that deep ball percentage was so high for Jalen Milrow is that Burton is playing very, very well. For the most part, there are still some drop issues. I still want to get started out, but, you know, progress in the right direction for Burton. 
We'll get to what Jalen Milrow said on Burton here in a little bit, but today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, the pros, the sharks, you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's simple to play. You can make your picks like these three picks I made for this upcoming week of NFL games. They'll get to the college games, by the way. Uh, those won't be up until you know Wednesday, Thursday-ish, so patience there, but they will have uh, college ones to bet on as well. I got more than Trevor Lawrence passing yards, more than a half touchdown for Kenneth Walker the third, so one, and then more than on Cooper Cup receiving yards because Cardinals defense is not that good. When you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and you use code CLNS, they will give you a first deposit match up to $100. Free money in your account. Link will be in the comments in the description of today's show. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and use that code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Here's what Milrow said about Burton. I just saw something in his eye starting the week off. He was real hungry and ready to go. You didn't have to ask him if he was locked in. You could just tell how he practiced, how well he practiced, how he committed he was to the game plan. That all factored into the success that was present this weekend. Nick Saban, quote, we're really excited about the game that he had, his performance, and what we can build on with that. I think he's learned that you really don't want to do anything to help the other team. And he's done a lot to hurt the other team. So let's not do, let's, let's don't do anything to help people. It's a great step forward for Jermaine Burton. I would like to see more out of others on this wide receiving core. It's been a little bit inconsistent. You know, Malik Benson, Kobe Prentice, two guys that I thought, producer Chris thought, were going to play a bigger roles, or at least had a chance to play bigger roles. We, we fell for it again, didn't we? The, the wide receiver Juco hype, or freshman hype, whatever you want to call it. We fell for it again in the offseason. I thought they'd both be a little bit more impactful. You know, Jalen Hill had a big impactful game at one point. You know, Isaiah Bond is still a a reliable-ish option for, for Milrow. But through six games, these guys haven't done that much. You know, Malik Benson has caught not six of nine targets. It's nice, but also not, for 70 yards. Kobe Prentice, nine for, or 11 for nine for 93, okay? I, I think with the way this offense is still going to be built, you're not going to be able to pepper everyone with targets. There's too many options at wide receiver on this depth chart. And when you have to clearly feature Burton, you're going to continue to feature Amari Nyblack and more to give everybody involved, Benson, Prentice, Bird, or Bond, Hale, etc. There's not quite enough bodies out there. But do you still want to see more of Benson and Prentice? Sound off in the comments section. Y for yes, N for no. Go vote for me in the comments right now. Before we go, I do want to talk about the penalties this Crimson Tide team is facing 14 penalties for 99 yards. You overcame that. It is not easy to do that in college football. They have got to get their penalty issues figured out. Wasn't an issue in week one. Middle Tennessee State, two for nine for 19 yards. You'll win that game. Texas was 10 for 90. Those are, that's bad. Those are some big penalties you're committing. And again, when, when, when you are costing, like most drives, a good drive goes like 60, 70 yards, right? Somewhere in that range, sometimes it's 75 you score, but here's just stuff, whatever. You're costing yourself a drive and a half or two drives in penalties alone or giving them an extra drive and a half. USF was okay. Ole Miss was a little bit high too. Mississippi State was a bit better, but you've committed at least five penalties in every game since week one. And that's fine, but you can't have penalties of 60, 90, and 99 yards in the same game. That's not going to work. When you play Tennessee... When you play Auburn, when you play LSU, when you play Kentucky, when you get to that gauntlet, you can't be making that many mistakes. You, like, like, remember, say I mentioned, you know, hope on the other team? This is helping the other team. Has to stop for the Crimson Tide. So what we're going to do, do today to wrap up today's show is we're going to bully Alabama into committing less penalties. Because bullying works when it's for a good cause. It's okay. The ends will justify the means here. So tight flags to bully Alabama into committing fewer penalties right now. 